Here we have the sum and difference rule. So this is another do nothing rule is what I would call it. It doesn't impact how you take the derivative. It just says if you have two terms added or subtracted, make sure you take the derivative of each term and add them and subtract them accordingly. So for instance, if your original function has more than one term, let's call the first term f and the second term is g. When you go to take the derivative y prime, make sure you take the derivative of that first term plus the derivative of that second term. Doesn't change anything, um, and this is whether it's added or subtracted. So looking at this first example, g of x, the derivative is going to be labeled g prime of x. And I'm going to take the derivative of each term normally. So First term, we have x to the ninth, so the derivative is going to be 9x to the eighth. Bring down the power, subtract one for the new power. Then we have our mini rule here. If we try to bring down the power, it's the first power, so it doesn't change anything. Negative 7 times 1 is still going to stay negative 7, and then you'd have x to the 0, which would just be 1. So the derivative of negative 7x is negative 7, our mini rule. Last term is a plus 12 that doesn't have an x on it. That was our very first rule we went over. The derivative of every constant is just zero. So you could write plus zero at the end, but you definitely don't need to. So the derivative of this whole thing, x to the ninth is nine x to the eighth, derivative of negative seven x is negative seven, and derivative of 12 is zero. So sum and difference rule just says, make sure you take the derivative of every term. The next one is the same rule, but quite a bit harder just because of the algebra. So I'm going to take a second, and I know I have to rewrite this because I see, first of all, I have a root. This is going to be 3x to the 1 half, really. Square root means 1 half, power is 1, root is 2. And then the next term, we have a plus 2, and then we want to bring that x out of the denominator, so it must be a negative power. So we have plus 2x to the negative 3. And then be super careful, don't take the derivative of these last two terms, even though they don't need to be rewritten. We're going to rewrite the whole thing, then take the derivative of the whole thing. All right, now that everything's rewritten, we're going to take the derivative of each term normally. I'm going to bring down that power. I can do 3 times 1 half in my head, or use my calculator. 3 times 1 half is going to give me 3 halves x to the 1 half minus 1. You might be able to do it in your head or use your calculator. I'm going to do it here. 1 half minus 1 is really minusing 2 over 2. So keep the same denominator. 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1 half. So we bring down the power, subtract from the new power. We take the derivative of that term. Now the next term, 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6. Negative 3 minus 1 makes it more negative. We have negative 4. Derivative of 2x is our mini rule. So above derivative of negative 7x was negative 7. Now we have the derivative of 2x is 2. And lastly, we have a constant. Derivative of negative 1 is 0. Derivative of every number, if it doesn't have an x or variable in it, is just 0. So there's our full derivative. Okay, let's keep going with this. Well, these next two... Well, first of all, we have division in this one and then multiplication in the next one. Well, this is supposed to be a sum and difference rule. So we need to actually use some algebra and divide and multiply these out so that it is just a sum or difference, not a product or a quotient. So for this first piece, every term is divided by x. So I'm going to do some side work and actually just do that division. So we have 4x cubed. That's getting divided by x. Minus 5x squared is getting divided by x, plus 3x over x, plus we have 10 over x. So still not that simple. So I'm going to use some properties from page 2 back in that algebra review. We have division means subtracting powers. So we have 4 and then we have 3 minus 1. This is going to be 4x squared. We have minus 5x to the 2 minus 1 is just going to be a minus 5x. Then these x's cancel. We're going to have a plus 3. And lastly, we have an x left in the denominator. So that must be a negative power that is raised to. And since the power is not written, it must be a negative 1. So this is still the original function. We did some work, but it was all algebra. Calculus is where we get to bring down that power now and subtract it from the new power. So let's take the derivative of each piece now. So 4 times 2 is going to give me 8x to the first. 
Right now, that power is subtracting from the new power. Derivative of negative 5x is negative 5. That's our mini rule. Derivative of 3 is a constant, so the derivative is going to be 0. And then we're going to bring down the power and subtract from the new power again. So 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. And then we have x to the negative 1 minus 1 is going to make it more negative. So it's going to be a minus 10x to the negative 2. So again, algebra making that one pretty tricky because we have to actually divide by that one term in the denominator. Then the calculus stays the same. Similarly, with the next one, we have multiplication. We don't have a rule for multiplication yet, so I'm just going to FOIL or distribute this out. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. So we did the first and the outer. We have these inner pieces. 2 times x is 2x. And our last terms, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And again, I might simplify this before I even take the derivative. I notice I have two x terms, so I'm going to combine those. Negative 1x plus 2x, 2 minus 1 is going to give us just 1x, and then minus 2. That is not my final answer. I did not take the derivative of anything, but now I'm ready to bring down that power. Derivative x squared is just 2x to the first, or 2x. Our mini rule here, derivative of 1x is 1. And then we have a constant at the end. Derivative of negative 2 is 0. Derivative of every number is 0. So there's our sum and difference rule. Make sure you take the derivative normally and then add or subtract according to whatever it was in the original function.